Good evening, City Council. Tony McCary, Director of Aviation at the Durango La Plata County Airport. Here to talk to you today about a potential airport land acquisition. Uh, first, I want to outline the property that we are looking at for acquisition. It is 820 Airport Road in Durango. Uh, the, Onya, uh, the owner is Queen Onya Properties, Thank LLC. You. Uh, it's 12 point, <laughs> just over 12.5 total acres. About six of those acres are currently occupied by building and uh, existing development. The other six and a half acres are fenced outside storage and staging area. Um, the parcel does contain two separate buildings uh, comprising about 240,000 square feet of office and warehouse space, as well as septic, high speed fiber, and primary and secondary electrical lines to the property. Uh, the map you can see here outlines the property. Uh, the, the area outlined in red is the existing overall terminal area um, that exists today. The area outlined in yellow is the acquisition site. You can see this lies roughly north northeast of the current terminal um, and is an adjacent to it that is bisected by the existing County Road 309A. Uh, short background on why we are looking at this acquisition. Um, as the council is familiar, the airport did conduct a, an airport master plan study that was completed in 2016. Um, as a result of that study, a preferred alternative was identified, which uh, proposed the development of the east side of the existing airport uh, for the ultimate expansion of terminal facilities. A uh, ballot issue was put um, on, in front of the Plata County voters in the November of 2016, uh, proposing a property tax initiative to fund uh, part of those improvements. Uh, that ballot initiative was not successful. Uh, what we found ourselves today is that our preferred alternative for long-term development at the terminal is currently not fundable. Uh, we have a minimum $45 million investment that needs to be procured locally, and we don't have a viable funding mechanism to obtain that level of, of funding in the current fiscal environment. Uh, meanwhile, we're continuing to see pressure on our existing facilities uh, with continued growth uh, throughout the air service market in southwest Colorado and finding ourselves looking for development opportunities that can continue to match that growth as well as just the existing demand for today. So this acquisition parcel came on the market in very late 2017. Um, and frankly, the, the voluntary acquisition of land adjacent to a commercial service airport is an extremely rare opportunity. Uh, this type of opportunity does not come very often. It was not foreseen throughout any previous planning opportunities. Uh, with regard to acquire this land, it allows for us to look at more unconstrained growth alternatives to be considered um, as we look to meet our growing demand. So if you think back to the airport master plan, for those that were involved in that process, one of the big underlying factors about why the ultimate east side development was selected as the preferred alternative was the fact that the existing terminal facilities are uh, by and large landlocked. Uh, to our west is a major topographical drop off into the Florida River Valley. To our east is airfield infrastructure, which is immovable. And north and south of us was existing commercial development. Uh, north ex uh, essentially being this property. So that was one of the, the major underlying factors that pushed us to look at the east side of development, saying if we're looking at long term, 30 plus year development of the terminal, are we gonna run out of space, quite frankly? And that was a consideration that had to be looked at severely and why we ended up looking the way we did. Uh, and this pr opportunity presents us an opportunity to look back at that and reconsider with an acquisition. Uh, and then lastly, land acquisition of this nature is eligible for FAA grant reimbursement through their airport uh, improvement program. So what would we do with the parcel? Um, in the short term, the existing buildings would be leased back to Quinonia Properties, uh, LLC, uh, the existing operator for a minimum of two years while we conduct our own internal planning efforts uh, to figure out funding sources and future development needs for that parcel. That also represents cash flow for the airport in the short term. Long term, uh, we're likely to use that land uh, for a variety of potential things, one being additional passenger vehicle parking, which is uh, the biggest overall space utilization at any airport is surface parking for vehicles, uh, rental car facilities, circulation road, and or airport entrance road realignment, all of which would free up land around the existing terminal site for us to be able to expand in a potentially phased and incremental manner as uh, need dictates into the future. Um, and by doing so, we leverage our existing utility infrastructure and our existing airfield infrastructure, which were major, major impediments about why we were looking at it an $85 million investment to, to move uh, facilities to the east side of the runways. It is a greenfield site. We don't have utility infrastructure. We don't have taxiways, aprons, roadways, all of that, all of which does exist on the west side where we're looking. Um, just take these with a grain of salt. These are conceptual alternatives. These have not been highly vetted, but they do provide um, the council with a, a pictorial evidence of 
uh, how we might envision this parcel being used. So you can see that the, the parcel is sort of on the right side of your screen here um, that is being considered for acquisition. These are just three scenarios that show how the potential facilities could grow over time, mainly used showing that parcel is long-term parking, but also considering the potential for uh, rental car facilities to be relocated to the area as well as entrance road and circulation. Um, these are all just different scenarios that would allow for a totally different range of things to be studied. <clears throat> each of which meet the, the needs of the airport master plan. So our master planning efforts um, are not in vain. The, the, the meat and potatoes of that exercise remain in place. Our needs, our long-term forecasts remain in place. And what we've, we've essentially vetted through this acquisition is by acquiring those 12 and a half acres of land, we can meet the long-term projections, forecasted projections of growth at the durango Plata County Airport with this acquisition and not have to worry about the landlock status of the airport hampering long-term growth at our airport facility. So acquisition details, the appraised value was $3.9 million. That was completed and finalized in November of 2018. Uh, that offer of just compensation was made to the, the current owner uh, at $3.9 million in early December. Uh, it was uh, accepted by the owner uh, two days later on the 6th of December. Uh, as we stated earlier, the current owner does desire to lease back the buildings and parking lots for a minimum of two years. Uh, lease revenue would total $12,500 per month uh, through December of 2019, and then thereafter that rate would be increased to $16,250 per month for the remaining term of the lease, all representing ca positive cash flow for the airport. Um, and we are projecting a current closing date of June 17. Uh, offer contingencies, uh, just breeze through these real quick. First off is approval of the real estate purchase contract uh, by this body as well as the La Plata County Board of Commissioners who are scheduled to, to take a look at this uh, one week from today. Uh, we also have to appropriate the additional funds. Uh, we'll talk shortly about what the funding mechanism is. Uh, we need to um, satisfactory uh, negotiate an IGA between the city and county. Uh, regarding the acquisition of this parcel specific to the financing details, which we'll also touch on shortly, um, assess any uh, environmental findings, and also make sure we get a fair market value lease in place. So all of these uh, contingencies are currently in progress between the airport and the seller, um, and we uh, feel confident about the ability to check each of these boxes. Uh, financial impact, as I mentioned, the negotiated purchase price is $3.9 million. Um, it also mentioned it is eligible for FAA grant reimbursement um, at a rate of 91.88%, our current FAA grant match uh, with a CDOT overmatch of 4.06, uh, leaving the 4.06 as the local investment. Uh, if you do the math on that, it's just shy of about $160,000 post reimbursement. Um, that grant timing has been programmed in our uh, federal fiscal year 2021. Uh, so we work a CIP, a capital improvement plan, with the FAA on a yearly basis, programming all of our potential capital needs at the airport. Um, after this acquisition has come to light, we've worked with the FAA to get this programmed in, and it's currently in our accepted CIP for 2021. Um, so what that means is we have to carry an acquisition expense until that reimbursement can come into place um, approximately two years from today. So what we're doing is pursuing lease purchase financing um, to, in order to maintain a strong airport cash position. So the airport has done a great job of, of bolstering its reserves over the last handful of years, and we're starting to get into a, an even stronger fiscal position, feeling strong about where we're at, but we're not quite in the point where we can uh, lay out $3.9 million over a two-year term without um, extending ourselves very uh, thin. So we are looking at financing costs for this acquisition. Uh, details of that, uh, we're looking, as I mentioned, lease purchase uh, financing uh, with the acquisition property itself pledged as the asset. Um, so issuance fees for this will total approximately $75,000. That's an estimate at this point, but a fairly uh, good one. That will be a, a local expense. It's not eligible for reimbursement, so we will bear that locally. And then our annual lease purchase expense uh, will be just shy of uh, about a half a million dollars, dependent on some final interest rate um, calculations that would come about overall. Um, what we're looking for in terms of a funding mechanism on this are passenger facility charges. So PFCs, as, as we've discussed with the council in the past, are user fees assessed at the airport. Uh, these are not tax related in any way. Um, it is a $4.50 surcharge that is assessed to every outbound ticket uh, for every passenger leaving from DRO to any destination. Uh, those fees are collected by the airlines when you purchase your ticket, ultimately remitted back to the airport for eligible airport infrastructure projects. 
these projects are funded and vetted by the FAA and ultimately our, our funds are approved for those uses. Um, so we would be using strictly airport user fees to pay for this acquisition. Um, by using PFCs, our, our balance is currently strong. We have a balance of about $3.6 million today on the PFC fund side. Um, with this acquisition, as well as the other planned capital projects in place at the airport, um, over the next 10 years, our PFC balance remains greater than a million dollars throughout the entirety um, of that entire um, period of time. So we feel strongly about our ability to fit in this acquisition into our long-term capital plans without uh, putting the airport into a, a disadvantaged position relative to either this project or other ones we have on the books today. Um, and lastly, acquisition rewards, just to kind of sum it up, uh, what this does, as I mentioned, is allows us to study new alternatives for terminal area development. We have additional acreage and additional access opportunities, and it opens up a whole barrel of opportunities for us to study. Um, it also allows us to look at an incremental development strategy using air, uh, airport revenues to fund development over time. The big challenge of the east side is that it's a greenfield site. The minimum investment was so high that it, there was no viable funding mechanism to uh, initiate development other than looking for a taxpayer infusion. Um, with this opportunity now presenting itself, we can bet out and look at realistic incremental funding mechanisms. The airport, as we mentioned, does have funding streams in place, and um, we can viably look at bite-sized increments to invest and expand our facilities. Um, it also does maintain the current use of the property for now, which allows us to bring in lease revenue, which will offset um, the, the acquisition costs on about, about a 50% level. Um, it allows us to look at other future commercial opportunities on the, part, uh, on the property. The beauty of this is accomplished with airport funds. There are no local tax dollars associated with this acquisition. Um, and lastly, as we've mentioned before, it is eligible for FAA grant reimbursement. So with that, I would uh, entertain any questions and then seek a uh, council motion on the potential acquisition. Comments from uh, uh, council? Mr. Riccardi just impresses me every time he speaks. <laughs> Great job. Great job. Now, we had seen all of this before, and uh, I don't have any additional comments. I have a question. The, yes. What's the, you, you, the 96% grant from the FAA, what's the probability of receiving that? Very high. We, uh, the, the FAA has a, a program called AIP, Airport Improvement Program. Uh, it's a, a congressionally appropriated fund um, that has been funded in perpetuity for over 30 years. And we have reliably received our, our funding through AIP uh, for as long as I've been at the airport and airports across the country receive this. Really the only potential um, you know, impact that would threaten that funding existence would be um, federal issues in terms of appropriating funds government-wide. So uh, we're familiar with the challenges coming out of Congress in terms of funding. Um, however, the FAA did recently receive a five-year reauthorization bill that does um, better appropriate funds. So we're just subject to annual appropriations of, of those funds. So long story short, I feel very strongly um, about that uh, grant coming in in 2021. Um, we have never had any issues with those funds uh, becoming available once they're in our programmed and accepted CIP, which they currently are, this project is. And then I have another question. In the other original plan for the 85 million, we had talked about the need for an additional airline, an additional fifth plane to be able to mm -hmm. stay overnight. Over time, does this allow us to address that need? It does, indeed. Yeah, it allows us uh, to look at a variety of, of options. If you look at just one of these potential schematics, uh, you can see the blue area is the, the parking apron for aircraft. Um, you, if you can kind of see the different shades of blue on the left-hand side of the screen, that lighter shade of blue is the existing apron. Um, so what this is depicting is the ultimate expansion uh, of the apron to the north in this case to allow us to accommodate, you can see in this picture, you know, nearly, what was that, eight, nine planes um, at the, the airport terminal facility. So this really allows us, like I said, to leverage our existing infrastructure. So in that case, we're not building a completely new commercial apron, we're just adding on to the apron we have. Mm -hmm. uh, much in the same way we'd be potentially assessing renovation and expansion of the existing terminal building, um, as well as adding on to the parking infrastructure we have instead of starting um, on a greenfield site. Okay, and I'm sorry, I have one more question. Go ahead. Um, for the renovation of the existing building, how would you do that at the same site? Right, so that will, uh, is not completely vetted out at this point. So once, um, if the land acquisition is to be approved and, and ultimately closed on, we have a scope of work that is in final draft format to essentially revise our terminal area plan. 
uh, would do a full planning study to vet this out. So these are very much conceptual alternatives here. We'd go through sort of a, a mini process similar to what the master planning process was to reevaluate what the new preferred alternative would be and define that. And it might well be a phased renovation and expansion of the existing terminal, or as like these concepts show, it could be the possibility of a new terminal being built next door to the existing terminal while we use the, the existing facilities and we don't interrupt operations in that way. So there's certainly challenges in any way. Those really, what, what that, you know, these two options here depict is alternatives one and two from our master plan, which is renovation of the existing, as well as construction of a brand new next door. That'll really come down to, um, you know, funding availability and, and cost estimates, and that is part of what the, the scope of work we're gonna execute um, with an architectural firm to, to work through that process and, and ensure that we have um, a viable CIP we can continue to work through year over year moving forward. Thank Comments? You. But as the council's representative to the airport commission, I can say that, that to answer uh, uh, Councillor Yusuf's question about the likelihood of that, uh, a, uh, that, that funding Grant. It is uh, what they look at is what they were going to spend on moving the terminal across the, the runway in that $98, $99 million facility versus spending $3.9 million to allow a much uh, cheaper solution in the end mm -hmm. uh, relative to their um, total expenditure. So I think this is a no brainer from their standpoint. So. Uh, most of the discussion that we had at, uh, at the airport commission was around how to do the interim funding, this the gap funding, if you will. And uh, even that, we're sitting there going, whatever it is, we'll make it work because it's, you know, when you get 96% of your, of an acquisition of $3.9 million funded, everything else kind of falls to the side. So Amazing. in terms of importance. And so, and we did uh, we want to make sure that the airport fund, we didn't drain it down too much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just don't go out and pay cash for it in the interim, get reimbursed in two years. Let's just make sure that the, that fund stays stable and that we're, we're not financing that much. And so I think, I think uh, there's been a lot of thought and strategy go into the, the deal. I wish we had deals like this on every facility we could yeah. acquire. And, but you know, the the, the, the bottom line is uh, it, it is an unintended consequence of uh, the downturn in the oil and gas industry that allows this opportunity to become available. And uh, that's unfortunate, but I'm really glad to see that the current tenants, you know, that was one of the things too, that we just don't want to, you know, that we want to allow them to uh, play out their useful life in this facility. So. Mm -hmm. And it'll take us that long to, as Tony says, to recreate these plans. Mm -hmm. It does, uh, we're all, we went through the whole master planning process to put the terminal, I made the choice to put the terminal on the other side of the, of the runway. Mm -hmm. Now we have to redo that, that study, mm -hmm. which will be done to uh, cause this to, to end up with the, uh, the idea that this would become our preferred, if it becomes our preferred solution. And then that, oh, that is the, the uh, that allows the FAA to continue to fund uh, improvements on this side of the runway. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the ingredients of it. Okay. Uh, Councilor White? Yeah, I just wanted to comment that um, if I remember correctly from the, from the existing master plan, option two was an adjacent terminal, and that was significantly cheaper than the just working with renovating the existing one, but obviously that's going to be looked at again yes. very carefully. Um, if I'm doing my arithmetic right, uh, most of the cost is financing and only a very modest right. piece is the actual prop property acquisition once the grant comes through. Uh, but it's the rental income, as you said, is roughly half of that. Yep. And the other question I had was just simply a, a numerical one. Uh, just my visual estimate, this is about a 40% expansion of the existing uh, of terminal area, mm -hmm. which is huge, right. mm -hmm. uh, for uh, you know the the cost is just shockingly low given the benefit. Yeah, I would concur. Well, I would just say this is the best thing for <coughs> sliced bread. <laughs> and just to review for our community, the airport is an enterprise fund, and an enterprise fund means it must pay its own way. And this is exactly what the airport has done. They saved their money, uh, luck fell upon us, and the opportunity is rich. And so 
Um, this is a wonderful opportunity for Durango, the community. I'll just mention that even more so, American Airlines begins flying Chicago and Houston direct flights in June. It is, yep. American will be initiating uh, Chicago flights and United will be initiating Chicago and Houston flights starting June 8th. That's Saturday for service throughout the summer with United's uh, service continuing through the end of October. Well, that is really good news. So we have more opportunity in our community to make those direct, direct flights. And again, the Enterprise Fund. This is not funded by a sales tax. It's not funded by a property tax. It's pay your own way. We have other businesses in the city of Durango that we call Enterprise Funds. And so thank you so much for uh, this presentation. You can tell city council's just all Twitter here about this new information for our community. And with that, I will look for a motion from council. I'll try. I'll make okay. a motion to direct okay. the city manager to execute a purchase contract with Coinonia Properties <laughs> right. LLC on the acquisition <laughs> of the 12.523 acre parcel and incorporated improvements and approve the attached resolution authorizing the acquisition. Second. Roll call, please. Councillor Brickey? Yes. Councillor Patin? Yes. Councillor White? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Yusuf? Yes. Mayor Marbury? Yes.